overflows. Narin meets Ramakrishna, the turning point. It was 1881, that first time Narin Vivekananda met Ramakrishna. There are instances where we are left deeply impressed when we meet someone. And there is no way that we can describe this meeting. The meeting may be just for a few minutes, but we are left with, an, with a feeling that we want to stay and know more about the person we met. There is always an indelible impression left after that meeting because the soul recognizes the answering soul. Such people manifest an indescribable charm and influence, so much so that we do not want to part from them. These are the situations that each one of us cherish and remember and feel that something within us has changed after this meeting. And for this there is an inner preparation. The meeting between Ramakrishna Paramhans and Narendranath Dutta was something that not only changed the young Narendra's life forever, but also gave the world an extraordinary messenger to spread the thoughts and philosophy of this great saint from Dakshineshwar. As a young man, Vivekanand was of an athletic build, a resonant voice, and a brilliant intellect. At college he studied and absorbed the Western thoughts, the Sanatan Sanskriti, Hindu scriptures, Bhagavad Gita, Upanishads, Vedas, and Bengali literature. He was constantly trying to reconcile his own inborn religious, inborn tendency, inborn insatiable quest for his spirituality and inner life. His respect for ancient religious traditions and beliefs and his own spirit of inquiry. He tried to find comfort in the organization run by Raja Ram Mohan Rai, the Brahma Samaj. He spent time in the company of Devendranath Tagore, the father of Ravindranath, but could not get a convincing answer from any one of them to the questions about the existence of God. It was this crit critical juncture that at the assembly institution, Professor William Hasty was discussing in his class ecstasy as described by William Wordsworth in his poem the excursions. Hasty mentioned that the saint who lived in Dakshineshwar at Kosipur on the bank of the Hooghly River just outside Calcutta had experienced this ecstasy and was also not only that Vivekanand was prompted by his cousin to visit this saint. It came about 1881, Narin was 18 years of age, the historic, the memorable, the incredible meeting of these two happened, the prophet of modern India and the carrier of his message. Narendra was then only 18 years of age. The meeting took place in Calcutta. Ramakrishna was visiting someone. Narendra entered 
Ramakrishna's room along with his friends and sang a few songs at the request of Ramakrishna. Listening to those songs, Ramakrishna entered into ecstasy. A few minutes later, Ramakrishna took Narin by his holding him by his hand, led him outside. There he addressed him tenderly and spoke to him as though he knew him for a long time. He asked him, Why have you kept me waiting for so long? Why have you kept so late? Why were you so unkind and made me wait for this long? He addressed Narin as Narayan, born on the earth to remove the misery of humanity. He held his hand and asked him to come again, alone and very soon. Narin was startled and wondered why he had come to see this madman. Anyone for that matter will realize the moment the master tells the seeker that why have you kept me waiting for so long? Come back again. And it was quite evident for Ramakrishna whenever he is walking on the street and he hears the name Ram or Krishna, he will go get into the state of trance and will start dancing like a mad man. He was considered as mad. But returning to the master's room, Narin found Ramakrishna's word and inner logic, a striking sincerity and a convincing proof of his spiritual nature. In answer to this question, it happened, Ramakrishna went back to Kosipur. In 1884, Vivekananda's father, Vishwanath Dutt, passed away. Vivekananda had a long family. He had three sisters. There was no source of livelihood. So, 1884, he came to Ramakrishna to alleviate his financial problems. And there, the, we spoke to Ramakrishna for his problems. Ramakrishna said, go to the temple, Mother Kali is waiting for you. You can ask anything that you want. Vivekananda wanted to ask the financial support and prosperity. But at such moment, it is goddess of learning, Saraswati, came on his tongue and make him ask, Ma, Mujhe Vivek, Vairagya, or Buddhi Do. Mother, grant me the discriminating intellect, renunciation, and Intense devotion, Ramakrishna, when he came, Ramakrishna asked, did you ask the mother? Then he realized what he was supposed to ask, but he did not. He was sent a second time, same thing happened. Was sent a third time, same thing happened. And Ramakrishna said, your life is for a different purpose. But I bless you that you will not have any of such things. At that moment, Narin asked Ramakrishna, Sir, have you seen God? To this, Ramakrishna responded, Yes, I have seen him, just as I am seeing you here, and I have talked to him only more intensely. Narin was finally, has finally found someone who could assure him from his experience 
that God existed. His doubts, his doubt was dispelled and that was to be the beginning of his initiation and training that time. This was just first of the few meetings between Ramakrishna and Narin and soon Narin became convinced of Ramakrishna's spiritual attainment and became one of his most ardent devotee. It happened, he continued The, there at Kosipur, it was 1884, 1884 that this meeting took place. Thereafter, Vivekananda started spending time and there he experienced Nirvikar, Nirvikal Samadhi at Kosipur. There is one beautiful incident, the meeting between Ramakrishna, the acquaintance, that was beyond time and space. It was as if that he was being nourished and nurtured from time immemorial. First meeting took place in 1881 and Ramakrishna entered Samadhi in 1886. So really the meeting began, the communion began between Ramakrishna and Vivekananda at the age of, in the year 1884, two years after Viveka, Ramakrishna entered Samadhi. One moment of love if there is a preparation within you, one moment is more than enough to for the master to transfer entire, pour himself into the disciple. Otherwise it takes years upon years and lives in preparation. Sufis say the moment disciple is ready, master appears. Vivekananda was ready at the right moment, he did not need too much time with Ramakrishna. The ground was prepared, only something was to be done, and that has happened at that moment. There is an incident, Ramakrishna, Vivekananda started staying at Kosipur. There was a person named Kalu. He had almost 300 stones and these were his gods and goddesses. He used to worship them every day, every day. And thereafter, when he finished worshiping them, then he will go and have his meals. Vivekananda was, did an experiment. He went in his meditation, he communicated to Kalu to go and throw these stones in the river, Hugli, that was flowing right there. As Kalu was going, Ramakrishna realized what had happened. He told, asked Kalu what he is going to do. He was told, he said, you go back home. And then he told Narin, that you will not experience that state anymore because you have misused it. At his request, he said three days before your samadhi, you will experience that back. I will go on another sessions, Vivekananda's life in tomorrow's session, enough for now.